friends. So uh, here I am with uh, a whole pile of tools here. I was at the homeless desk spot and I thought this would be a great time to make a video. Uh, some time ago I bought a bunch of this Ryobi crap. I got sucked in because they had a holiday deal. And um, I bought the kit where you buy a, some drill, this brushless drill right here. That thing lasted for about a week before it crapped out. And now when you twist it, it turns on all by itself. I brought it into Home Depot. They fixed it. Guess what? It does the same thing again. So here's another one of them. Same thing. And I don't know, some impact driver. Here's a brushless... Um, the hottest brushless Sawzall from Cryobi. And this one, when you put the blade in, it destroys the LED that looks out the front. So I brought that in, fixed it. Guess what? The minute you put the blade in again, craps out. Junk. So I was over at Home Depot and I was getting get myself a brand new box of tools for another holiday deal from one of my favorite tool vendors, which is Makita. And as you should know, I do not get paid for any of these reviews. I did. I paid for this out of my own pocket. This is not something I got from Home Depot or Makita. Uh, this is one of my old Makitas. Works great. Love it. But it's nickel metal hydride. This is an aftermarket battery I bought. I think I got it on Amazon. It's from, I don't know, it's a little triangle thing. Made in China. I don't know, little Delta triangle, some sort of battery. Anyway, it works well. But it was time to upgrade. Got some more home renovation projects coming up. So I got the Makita kit. We'll do this in another unboxing. Why are we here though? <laughs> well, I was over buying this garbage and I saw some other garbage. Being that it's post holiday, they had these cool app lights on like 75% off. So I think I paid 15 bucks for this thing. And it claims to be a wireless projector, multicolor and white wireless projector that'll spit out some little LED looking messages and things like that. Eh, what fun. Seeing that I have some kids, I decided we'd buy one and see how it works. Uh, in true form, you should never try it before you take it apart. So let's take this thing apart. You know, let's get rid of this thing. Bye bye. Let's pull this apart. There were a lot of screws, but I do not believe in making you guys go through a whole bunch of unscrewing, so I had my son do it. Huh? Bit size. Bit size? For the... Oh, they can figure it out. Right. My cameraman is a smart dude. He wants me to tell you the bit size, which is a T10, Torx T10. Torx! The follow-on to the Philips. Uh, so here it is. The Jemmy App Something Projector. It's totally craptastic, but I don't know, it's probably kind of cool. Let's see what they got in here. A really awful looking interior case, uh, machining marks all over the place, probably ABS plastic. Um, it's supposed to be waterproof, but there's no waterproofing at the clamshell of this thing whatsoever. And they have these red little accent pieces, so if you did pour water in here anywhere, you'd get water pouring in anywhere. They do have a little cord grommet thing, um, strain relief, kind of cool. Dives into a little box here, so the engineering's not bad for cheap stuff. It dives into a little box, so when you pull on the cord, it won't uh, yank on the actual cord, it'll pull on the relief. Um, keeping going here <clears throat> with the construction details, we get rid of these things. It's really pretty simple for a projector. I see back here a reset switch little hole back here and it's got a silicone silicone condom on it sitting right on top here it's got a fan power supply heat sink that's the LED there's a little uh, the French Fresnel lens right here or Fresnel uh, and there's a sheet in front of it which looks like something to so you don't see the um, details of the LED so you don't when you project this through the LED is uh, I don't know what that's called. That Someone will have to tell me what that's called. That's like a textured sheet. So the little bits of the LED get all messed up and you don't see the image of the LED projected through. And then this looks like the projection panel, the LCD projection panel. And then we have out here a lens. Is If it's one lens, I think it's a len. Multiple lens or lens. No, that's not true. 
that's me attempting some humor. Uh, yeah, and then underneath here is the guts of the thing. So let's take some stuff apart. First, let's start in the back. There's the fan. The really crap E. Oh, wow, 18-volt fan. Where are you going to find an 18-volt brushless DC fan? I mean, who would take this apart? There's the power supply, and it's cased up in a little plastic thing. By the way, the power supply, uh, when it's in here, pretty much obscures all of the fan as it's coming through. So, I don't know. You can back that up a little bit. It's fine. My cameraman, Nate. Thank you, man. Uh, he was under a little bit of protest about doing this, but I love that when he does that. All right. So here we can pop this thing apart and see what's inside. Little snap feature. This will be a polypropylene case. Super simple power supply. It's a switch mode power supply. Power comes in on this side. Little capacitor on the in inlet. A couple of probably really crappy capacitors over here. I don't even know if they have a name on them. Unio. I don't know. Probably whatever they could find. Uh, a little IC probably to switch, make a frequency on this thing, a transformer to step it down, some bridge rectification right over here, and uh, what does it have here? It looks like it's got one output. Yep, so here's the output of the thing, and it's shared between driving the electronics and driving that fan. So that's probably they needed 18 volts for that LED, so they just wanted to do a single... Um, output power supply and it did 18 volts also for the fan. Looks like the fan has a connector so we can take that dude out. All right, moving forward, we'll, oh, we need a Phillips. Um, so we're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver to take the uh, LED heat sink out of here. Uh, I didn't plan on that, so give me a sec. Hey. Here in the shop, we have all the tools necessary to remove the parts of the enclosure. Some washered screws. These are screws that have integral washers in them. They're meant to do stuff that you probably shouldn't do with screws. So uh, whatever, that holds that together nicely. Totally cheap crap. You know, the whole point is to be super cheap. Pick this up on the after holiday sale. So uh, it is what it is, you know. Take that columnating lens off of there. Oh, that's kind of cool. A little LED element with uh, some sort of dichroic filter over it. I don't know how it's going to work. What? I don't know. That'll be interesting to turn it on like this and see what it does. So this little thing is supposed to connect up to your phone using Bluetooth. I'm going to put that back together. No, I won't. It connects up to your phone with Bluetooth, and then you um, can project messages on your house like I'm a Grinch uh, I hate Christmas I don't know whatever you want really um, there are on the app there are little graphics and stuff and it'll say fa la 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 all sorts of little cool stuff so that's the Fresnel lens F-R-E-S-N-E-L I believe cool bunch of rings uh, we'll talk about that in just a sec so that holds the projectors. Um, why can't I get the Fresnel lens out of there? That's, oh, one more. <clears throat> it's like a little hollow box under here. So the Fresnel lens is like a massively thin columnating lens that's going to take the um, light and make it into parallel rays. And then the parallel rays go through the projector panel right here in parallel. So let's go from the top. Let's look at the top on this thing as we put it together. Before we pull the optical bench apart, the light comes out of here. It's a point. They start defocusing the light and bring it into parallel rays from here. So they were starting out as a point. They need to be parallel, all lined up. So you imagine each light ray is like lines on a paper on a ruled notebook. So they come through this Fresnel lens, and that really brings them straight. Comes in angled, like they're kind of um, like an angle. And then they, by the time they get through here, they're very straight. They come through the panel. This is the panel with the LCD device in it, so it's going to turn on and off different pixels. 
Then it comes through here still straight because this is just basically a sheet of glass with some light valves on it to turn on and off light as it comes through. Hits this lens, which is the objective lens, and that's going to take the parallel light, light rays again and bring them um, out into uh, a the big image. So I hope I did a good job of that, but if I didn't, please do correct me. Uh, one thing I, if I'm not correct, I'm open to mistakes. I don't know what I am. It's all good stuff. If I'm not correct, hey, let me know, man. That's all fine by me. So under here, oh, it's screwed in with a little puny Phillips screws. This is the circuit board that drives the thing. Let's see what we got here for like a number one or a number zero. It looks like a number one, Phillips. Phillips screws were probably great in the 60s, but they suck now. You know, Phillips screws were invented originally in the aerospace aviation industry, specifically so you didn't strip them out. When you over torque them, they would cam out. I'm sure all of us know what I mean by cam out when they don't stay in there, the bit doesn't stay in there. That was an advantage back when Phillips screws were invented, but now we have torque clutches and lots of torque systems to pre prevent over torque, so we don't really need to avoid camming out. We would actually rather it just stays in all the time. So that's why we use torques. Okay, there's one of those uh, zero insertion force connectors. Here's the projector panel. Doesn't look like anything right now because it's all uh, on, so you can see through it. But as soon as we would turn it on, we expect to see dots through there. And then we have the beautiful circuit board. So here uh, we've got one of those where the silicon die is actually laid right onto the circuit board and soldered on. They avoid the trouble of putting a chip and um, putting a chip on there and all the extras of that. So they just put the pads right there, drop the die on, and off it goes. Um, over here looks like some other, another power supply or two that they've created. A couple of inductors here and some capacitors. This whole side screams power supply to me because it's got coils of wire, which are inductors. They're going to choke out high frequency noise. They've got capacitors, which are great for allowing a um, DC straight through. And then there's a crystal over here, this little can called Y1, I don't know why, but Y is the symbol for crystal. This is a Bluetooth module, all put together. They bought the Bluetooth module and then they soldered it on here. Just laid that out so there'd be some, not many wires on there. There's one, two on this side, three, four, five on this side. There's probably a power ground and then some sort of um, I squared C or SPI bus, SPI bus to get the Bluetooth data to go into this chip. So there'd be some sort of protocol that we could spy on. We could SPY, take a look at it and see what's going on over this bus and figure out what the protocol is to talk to this bad boy. So as we go through and send different messages and things, we could watch those pins with a decoding oscilloscope and find out what's going on there. They've got 18 volts power coming in here and they've got a bat battery um, set of terminals that are unpopulated. Not sure what the battery voltage would be. Be kind of interesting to find out. These two blue wires were the reset. So there's a switch in the back for reset. Uh, it looks like a little capacitor in there to debounce the reset. There's some more stuff in the back. Not sure what. I would guess that might be a memory chip. It looks like an NXP. I'll have to look. If I'm good about this, I'll put it in the comments after I look. But let's be honest, I probably won't. Um, that's it for the board. Pretty simple. So some sort of specific integrated circuit that's built to drive this panel. Um, the Bluetooth module over here, some power supply, a crystal which is external to it. Uh, the power supply, of course, is going to drive the LED. And it's going to make sure that as you raise and lower the LED's voltage, brightness, it's not messing with the power over here to the chip, which is going to be much more sensitive. Oh, we already know this is the LCD connector. It says LCD on it, but lots and lots of little wires over here, printed traces on the board for that. So really not much to it. Um, let's put it back together and let's see if it still works.